a lot of dietary flexibility. Meaning, if I want to fit in a slice of pizza and a serving of ice cream every single day into my calories, into my macros, and I can make it work, then by all means, you can lose fat. Uh, line them up, line them up, knock them down. Yeah. Yeah. They said it was a grind. They said it takes time, yeah, I know. I guess they weren't lying. Every time I try to climb, they cut the rope. I fell straight to the bottom, got problems, I don't really wanna talk about them, no. I've been down this road too many times to be afraid, I close my eyes when I walk down it. What's going on, YouTube? You're here with the prayers, and I'm bringing you this video today from the home gym. So, as you guys know, back in the beginning of March, I started my cut journey, right? I was eating around 32, 3300 calories on my high end when I was trying to gain some muscle and then slowly over the last couple weeks I've been cutting down until I hit a low weight as of late but this video is not going to be a weight update or a physique update today I'm going to be talking about a method of eating that I myself have been following and there's a lot of craze around it surrounding the internet now right so what we're going to talk about today is called IIFYM if it fits your macros listen guys that's a style of eating or you could call it dieting that gives you a lot of flexibility as long as you know how to do it correctly and that's what we're exactly going to go through in today's video so we're going to start with the bad the in-between and then we're going to get into the good things about if it fits your macros and how I have been utilizing it personally to help me hit my goals so just before we get started as you guys can see I am at a low weigh now, waking up in the morning at 160 pounds, 159, 160 pounds, depending on how the day before went, what I ate the night before, depending on how much water I'm holding. So typically, guys, in the past, anytime I try to cut, initially my first reaction was to go low carb, higher fats, right? I've done it before numerous times. I've gotten lean. I've gotten to my actual leanest back in like 2013, 14, down to almost 9, 8% body fat following almost a ketogenic diet. But guys, over the years you learn and you start to do things that are a little more beneficial for your training and for your lifestyle, right? Remember, when you're starting with lower carbs or cut carbs out in altogether, you're just limiting food sources that you have potential that you can eat, right? So guys, without further ado, we're gonna get into the bad things that If It Fits Your Macros has to offer and how it can set you up for failure. So let's get into If It Fits Your Macros. What's that mean? That means basically you can eat any foods that you want as long as it fits into your macronutrient profile. So for instance, a macronutrient profile would be split up, let's just make it easy, 33% protein, 33% carbs, 34% fat, right? That makes 100%. Your macros are always split out into 100% total. Remember, if you're eating a piece of pizza, you're eating one slice out of 16 slices, right? So it's a fraction of the total. So you only got protein, carbs, and fats. And each such are going to take up a fraction of your total macronutrients. So how do you implement if it fits your macros to make it work for you? This is how we do it, right? So the bad thing about if it fits your macros comes from the benefit of it, right? It allows you a lot of dietary flexibility. Meaning, if I want to fit in a slice of pizza and a serving of ice cream every single day into my calories, into my macros, and I can make it work, then by all means, you can lose fat doing that method. You could also gain weight if your goal is to gain weight. It all depends on what the goal is, right? That's the point of knowing what your macronutrient targets are as well as your maintenance calorie targets, right? Everything starts with maintenance calories. So if your goal is to cut, like I said before, you want to be in a two to 500 calorie deficit. If your goal is to bulk, you want to be in a two to 500 calorie surplus. Following the principles of if it fits your macros, it just allows you to have a little bit of a mental break from thinking of the term dieting. Like I said, you could theoretically fit slice of pizza in every day, two slices of pizza every day, ice cream, if you can fit it into your macros, then you can make it work. But the reason that that can be a downside is because it can lead to too many choices where you're trying to choose the bad foods over the good foods, right? And remember, foods such as ice cream, cookies, pizza, donuts, cakes, they're very easy to overeat. Why? Because they're very palatable, meaning your body loves the taste of it. It has that combination of fat, salt, and sugar all combined, which pretty much makes the brain light up and say, I want more of this. So when it comes down to being able to control those intakes of bad foods, if you have the willpower to track one slice of pizza and weigh out a piece of cake every day, more power.
power to you, you can make those food choices fit into your diet and you could go get, go ahead and get lean, bulk, build muscle, whatever the goal is. But like I said, the bad thing about it is the pattern of behavior that it creates. It'll constantly make you want to reach for the bad food as opposed to this quote unquote better or healthy food. So for instance, pre-workout, you may want to eat a slice of pizza, right? You're getting your protein, you're getting your carbs, you're getting your fats from it, right? But now let's just say on Monday, you buy a pie, the slice of pizza today weighs 200 grams. The next day you eat it, let's just say that slice weighs 250 grams. If you're just thinking, oh, I can eat the slice of pizza today because it fits my macros and you're not weighing it, it's going to set yourself up to fail, right? Because you're going to be going over 50 to 100 calories every single time you're eating it, right? Remember, those calories are going to add up. So the bad thing about if it fits your macros is it allows too much dietary freedom. If you don't have the willpower to control your food choices or track everything that you're eating, then it's going to be inevitable that you're going to tend to overeat the more palatable foods and you're going to tend to reach for them more often than not, right? It all Remember, teaching your body new patterns or new behaviors is key when trying to develop a new lifestyle, right? And getting lean is not easy, right? It's not going to be something you could just turn on like that and every, or else that, if that was the case, everybody would get lean, right? It takes time, it takes patience, and it takes some work along with it. Tracking calories, knowing your macros, etc., etc. So, like I said, if you have the willpower to track the foods, you can, in theory, fit anything you want into your diet. If you guys watched my previous video, full day of eating, every single day I make sure I have dessert, right? Most of the time, 90% of the time, I'm making it at home, whether it be an acai bowl, rice cakes, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, pancakes. I'm making it so I know exactly how much of each ingredient is going in. It's very easy for me to track. So, for instance, if my calorie intake for the day, which as of right now, I'm falling between 27 and 2,800 calories in a deficit. So, let's just say by the time I'm finished with my dinner meal, I'm at 2,200 calories. I know I still got about another 600 calories to play with. Maybe I'll have some ice cream. Maybe I'll have some cookies. It doesn't matter. Before I include those foods, I always make sure my protein target for the day is hit and my carb target for the day is hit or my fat target, right? The rest of the foods just get played into the remaining calories. You always want to make sure protein is accounted for. If it fits your macros, work perfectly for that. Now remember, everything is based off of percentages. So if you have 40% fat in your diet, 30% protein, 30% carbs, at the end of the day, as long as you hit that 40% fat number, 30% carbs, 30% protein, you're good, right? You don't have to worry about how much real fiber you got or the sugar you intake. Because at the end of the day, a calorie is a calorie. And you will, as long as you're in a deficit, be burning more energy than you're consuming. And your weight loss goals will coincide with the diet plan. Now, when it comes to bulking, you can do it. But again, overeating will tend to excess weight gain, right? You want to maintain as little body fat gains that as possible when you're in a surplus, right? You want to try to maximize the muscle growth and limit the fat growth, right? Now, if you're eating very hyper palatable foods, very fatty foods, along with a mixture of fats and carbs, pizza, donut, cookies, cakes, that's what's going to set you up to overeat those foods, right? So again, it can have a detriment when cutting and it can also be a detriment when bulking if you're not paying attention to the foods that you're eating and tracking them accordingly. Now let's get into the in-between. Now, like I said, the good and the bad of if it fit your macros fall into each other, right? And it all has to do with the flexibility. Now, the in-between, let's say you track everything spot on every day. You weigh out your pizza every day, you know exactly how much pizza you could have, you know how much gram, you know how many pieces of cake you could have each day. It doesn't matter, right? As long as you're at the end of the day of the calories equal to your macros and they equal up to the deficit that you're supposed to hit, you're going to be on track to hit your goals. But now where does it have a little bit in between, meaning it can be detrimental, but it could work at the same time. Now remember guys, food choices matter. They matter for overall health and longevity. They also matter for performance. So if you're going to tend to reach for a sugary food every day or a food that's high in fat and carbs altogether, and you want to eat that food pre-workout now, post-workout now, now it may start to hinder your overall performance in the gym. For instance, you guys know, I've said this before, pre-workout is when you want to pretty much consume a decent amount of carbohydrates, lower fats. Why? Because the carbohydrates are going to be your main energy store to get through the workout that you're doing. Especially if your goal is building muscle and you're hitting reps and sets, 
You're going to be burning through a lot of glycogen. You're going to want to have sufficient amount of glycogen in the blood to power through that workout. Now, let's say you choose to eat a slice of pizza pre-workout because it fits into your macros. Now, you're going to get a mixture of a lot of fat, a lot of carbs, and probably very minimal protein from that food, right? Now, the carbs will power you through, the fat can power you through, but a combination of both of them together are going to be pretty hard to digest, right? They're not going to be very easy on the body to digest and break down, which will have a turnover into maybe making your workouts a little more sluggish. You may not have the force output that you require for the, get, uh, for the given exercise throughout your session, right? So food choices do matter. They matter in terms of performance goals, health goals. I'm not going to say it's going to matter in, in terms of physique goals because, again, you can eat the pizza, the cake, the ice cream every day. As long as it fits into your calorie needs and your macro goals, you will hit your physique goals. You guys can look up. There's a professor who did a study of him just losing weight eating solely McDonald's foods, right? Every day for about 30 days, he ate off the McDonald's menu, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the end result, he lost body fat and lost weight in general, right? Why? Because he kept himself in a deficit. It didn't matter the food choices. Now, if he went to perform or if he had a competition or if he wanted to do a marathon, you think eating those foods would have been the best food choices to fuel those workouts or to get him through a marathon or to help him hit his goals when it comes to, in terms of working out? Probably not. That's where the in-between comes in, right? You can make it work if your goals are solely look-wise, right? But if your goals are performance and you want to get stronger and perform better in the gym, the food choices are going to matter. That's why I tend to always stick to about, I like to follow, you'll hear people say 80, 20, 70, 30. I'm more of like an 85 to 90 and 15% to 10% of dirty foods, right? So 85 to 90% of the foods I eat are clean, healthy effective fuel, food, what I'll call fuel, that's going to help me not only hit my physicals, but they're also going to help me perform better and better and hit, help me hit my workout goals in the gym, outside of the gym, etc., etc. I tend to keep that 10 to 15% playroom for the evening when I have that sweet tooth and I want to eat some dessert. Now, like I said, as long as I keep the room in, my calories and macros for it, at the end of the day, I can eat anything I want. I could go out and I could go buy it couple scoops of ice cream from the ice cream shop, right? I could go get a crepe if I want to. If I'm feeling like having some pizza at night, which I pretty much, once a week, guys, you guys know I like to have one gluten-free pie from my spot in Long Island. Shout out to Novita out in Garden City. Check them out. The best gluten-free pizza you're ever going to have, guys. If you're, really in, if you're in New York City, Long Island area, check out Novita in Garden City for the best gluten-free pizza you're ever going to try. So, the in-between comes down to performance goals, right? You can eat whatever you want. It's not going to really make a difference on your overall physique goals, but when it comes down to performance, that's when you're going to notice the detriment, right? So we went through the bad, we went through the in-between, now let's get into the good benefits about if it fits your macros. Remember, again, it all ties together, dietary flexibility. People hear the word diet right away and they think, oh my God, I'm going to have to start eating chicken and rice every day, I'm going to get so bored of it, how am I going to do this for six weeks until I hit my goal? Listen, you don't have to only eat chicken and rice. You don't have to eat broccoli every day. It doesn't matter. Like I said, allow yourself some flexibility. Don't make your point of if it fits your macros to be, I'm going to eat 60% junk and 40% good because you can, right? Uh, favor more of your macronutrients and calories coming from whole, nutritious foods that are going to fuel your workout and make you feel good. Digest easily, easier. Take, take up 70, 80, 90% of your calories with those foods. Then the remaining 30, 20, 10% calories, that's when you want. That's for me, that's what works best for me. That's when I like to play with the food choices, right? And I like to, again, keep them towards the latter end of the day. When I'm done with my workout, when I'm done with my training, my pre-workout nutrition is already covered. My post-workout nutrition is already covered. Now I already hit my total protein for the day. I already hit my total carbs for the day. Now I got a little bit of fats left to hit. Maybe I'm gonna throw in some peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Maybe I'm going to throw in an acai bowl. Why? Because I can. I left the calories and the macronutrients room to allow myself to eat those foods at the end of the day. Giving yourself a dietary break. Every day if you know, all right, I only got to eat three meals of decent food. Then my fourth meal, I get to go all out. Maybe I'm going to have some bowl of cereal. That's why I love Magic Spoon. Listen, guys, start DMing and, and tagging Magic Spoon on Instagram. Let them know to hook Bar Natural Press back up with his discount code so I can hook you guys up with it. If you guys aren't using Magic Spoon, I guarantee you, you're going to love it. It's going to totally revamp your diet, right? It's going to give you the ability to eat 
amazing tasting cereals that mimic the childhood cereals you used to eat. Again, they're going to be high in protein, low in carbs, low in fat, high in fiber, and they're going to be high in, and they're going to be high in good quality proteins, right? So they could be used as meals in themselves. It's all about finding the food choices that you like that work best for you. Like I said, this is where this is the good thing about it. if it fits your macros. You choose the foods you want to eat. You get to choose the foods that make you feel the best and perform the best. So for me, let's just say pre-workout, I like to have either cream of rice, oatmeal, with let's just say whey protein, some uh, grain-free granola, and some fruit, right? I get a high carb-heavy meal and some proteins very low in fat. That works for me, right? Post-workout, I like to keep the carbs and the protein high again and the fats low. If I'm keeping fats low for the pre-workout and the post-workout meal, that means I have a lot of room later in the day to fill up my fat calories, right? You're adhering for the calories by tracking them. As long as you know the food that you're putting in your body around the most critical and important times of the day for you and for me and for most people that train, that should be pre- and post-workout nutrition. The pre-workout meal is going to fuel your workout. It's going to get you through it the most effective way possible. The post-workout meal, again, that's going to refuel you. It's going to help speed up recovery and optimize recovery. But again, post-workout. Lately, I've been loving high carb, low fat, right? But what did I preach many times before, right guys? If I choose to have a ribeye post-workout, if I want to have a fatty cut of meat, then I'm going to let those fats take up the calories. I'm going to lower the carbs so I won't have as many starches. Remember, if I'm mixing a fattier meal, then the starch and the carbohydrates are going to go down. You guys got to learn to balance out per meal your fats and the carbs, right? Because the combination of sugar... Fat and salt together, that's what's hyperpalatable, right? So let's just say I had a ribeye, a very fatty piece of ribeye, then I want to eat 200 grams of white rice with it. Your body's not going to know. It's going to say, all right, should I, should I store the fat? Should I store the carbs? Typically, your body won't, will have a spillover effect from those energy uh, requirements, right? you got to learn how to balance that out yourself. That's another good thing about tracking. That's why tracking is so key. Track your meals. This way, when you have the freedom and the calories left, you know how many calories you could go out and have whatever the hell you want to eat of. So listen, guys. If it fits your macros, are a great tool to utilize if you can account and you guys can be honest with yourselves. Tracking is very important when following if it fits your macros, right? You can't just eyeball things out. Because like I said, one day you may have a piece of pizza that weighs 200 grams. The next day you might cut a slice that weighs 300 grams. That's going to give you an extra 100, 150 calories just from that slice alone, right? Now, if you're not tracking that, those calories will add up. Yes, you can choose any food you want as long as they fit into the macronutrient profile. But again, do it smart. Program the food choices that are going to benefit you and help you perform better around your workout times. It's going to be very stupid to choose fatty, sugary foods, a combination of them pre-workout because they're going to spike insulin and then they're going to cause a crash, right? You're going to be... You might be jacked up for the first 30 minutes, but then you're going to have a sugar crash, right? You also might be bloated during the workout due to the fact that it's very hard for your body to digest that meal that you just ate. So save the calories for, for later in the day, an off day. Remember, guys, you don't have to look at it as day by day either, right? So let's just say, for instance, I get to eat 3,000 calories a day. For the week, that equals 21,000 calories. Remember, I can eat 4,000 calories Monday, 2,000 calories Tuesday. I'm still at 6,000 calories by Wednesday, whether I ate 4,000, 2,000, or 3,000, 3,000. You guys got to learn to manipulate the calories, and that's the purpose of tracking, right? Day A, you may want to eat more. Day B, you may want to eat less. You may not be that hungry, right? If you worked out really hard, let's just say you hit a crazy leg session. You're starving today. All right, so today I'm going to eat 3,500. How am I going to balance that out? Tomorrow, I'm going to do a lighter workout, not as much volume. I'm not going to need the calories as much. I'm going to drop it down to 2,500. The net result is still the same, but track it. Remember, guys, if it fits your macros, are a great tool to utilize. If you know how to stay accountable and honest with yourself, track the foods. And again, guys, it's going to give you a big dietary break. It's going to give you a mental break. You're not going to have to worry about eating the same foods day in and day out. Because again, every day you can have something different. As long as you know the food choices that work well for your body, track it. Write it down in my fitness pal, and all your goals are going to fall into place. But again, it all depends on you. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with the scale. You have to be honest with weighing your food. You have to be honest with the food that you put in. All right, guys. I hope that gave you a little benefit into if it fits your macros, the good, the bad, and the in-between. Maybe it's a tool that you guys should try to utilize if your goals are to cut down, right? Listen, 
as I said, since March 1st, I've been on a cut. It's just about the end of April. Well, it's April 25th today. So almost two full months on the cut. And like I said, I'm falling around 27, 2800 calories from 3,300 calories. So what's the total deficit that I lost? 600 calories over the last two months. And again, I lost about five pounds. And I'm laying in the mornings now, steady in the 11% rep, uh, 11 body fat range. So I hope this video gave you a little insight of diet advice, how you guys can utilize this style of eating to help you hit your goals. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I always get back to you. If you like the video, leave a like. It helps YouTube promote the video even more. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Share the video with your friends, your family, anyone that you know that's having trouble with dietary advice. Let them watch this video. Let them send me a DM, email me, go on my website, barnaturalfitness.com. I got diet plans for everybody. And right now, up until Sunday, May 1st, I'm running a sale, 20% off all programs and all items on my website. So check that out. Again, barnaturalfitness.com. The code for the 20% is SHRED20, SHRED in capitals, 20 at checkout. So SHRED20 at checkout, get you 20% off. Like always, guys, peace out. Bar Naturals. For a die, I'm top three. For a die, I'm top three. For a die, look.